Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I've asked my mum Donna to come on as a special guest today. Hello. <laughs> um, for an extra video with her this month because I get asked two questions quite often. One question is how much books have played a role in the close relationship that I have with my mum. And then the other question I get asked a lot is how parents or carers can foster a love for books, a love mm. for reading in their children or the young people in their lives. So, I mean, yes, books have played a really big Huge, part I in think, our relationship, really. haven't yes, they? Yes. yes. And right from when I was born, before I was born, yeah. actually, I think. <laughs> and it's a real joy to us how much we love books and that we're able to share that joy together. Yes. It really means so much to us. It's yeah. given us such joy in our lives. It gives us a conversation, a vocabulary too, that we come back to. We have little in-jokes yes. between us that are about <laughs> the books we both love. Yes, and we actually have many mutual interests. We do. But books is probably the biggest one. Yeah. And so I think that it's lovely to be asked about how people can foster a love for reading in their children too. And I wanted to bring my mum on for this discussion because childhood reading, early reading is a passion of both of ours. It's yeah. a topic we're both really interested in. I'm a trained primary school teacher. I taught for quite a few years, mainly as a nursery and reception teacher. I also nannied a lot yes. all through. I did too. <laughs> yeah, yes. We, yes, we did. Yeah. And so I'm interested in this from a, prof a professional point of view. Mm. You also did a lot of teaching. I did. I did. I taught primarily middle grade, but also ESL and learning support. Yeah. And so you are, so you're interested in early Yeah, I'm reading. not an expert. And I think no. that must make that clear. I Neither of speak us are to... experts. So we're really only talking about our, our own experience. personal experience yeah. and our personal opinions and really what you did when I was a child yes. that made me such a keen reader. But, like I said, it just is also a topic that generally interests us both a lot. So yeah. I thought it would be fun if we both came on and chatted about it. Because from my perspective, I'm interested in it in a, from a professional point of view. Yeah. And because of the close relationship it's engendered with my mum. You're interested partly professionally from but your experience I was as a, a teacher. I am a mum. But because <laughs> yes, you're yes. also a mum. Yes, yes. <laughs> So you have more of a personal interest there. Yeah. So what we thought was we would share our top five tips, and we have a little bonus tip as well for you, on how to really foster a love for books in your child. So our first point yes. is it starts before even books, before even you open a book. Yes. Do you want to explain a bit about that? Well, my feeling is, um, I certainly, because I, I nannied a lot and babysat one, and I had two lovely nieces that I read to. Before also, I even before came Before you along. Were, came along, yeah. yes, <laughs> definitely. Um, I, I always knew nursery rhymes, nursery stories, inside out. But I wanted to make sure, when I was thinking about having you and, and getting pregnant, I wanted to make sure that those were really cemented in there. So... I really took the time to study and learn nursery rhymes again, make sure I knew them really word perfect and found books that I enjoyed learning for finger play because finger play is really important. I found in those days cassette tapes that you could listen to um, of, you know, the songs that were so often yeah. sung to babies, things like that. Because it's so important to just start with a vocabulary talking yeah. to your child and really creating that love for words and mm. babies start to recognize different words but they also just love to start to understand the rhythm of words and the different rhythm of words and that's why things like um, 
finger play or tapping on the body or feet while you're saying a nursery rhyme is really important because it gives that child that sense of rhythm in a little poem or song and just in words in general and they love it but you don't even start with books to begin with you really do just start sharing the love for language the joy in rhythm and song yes and you have a little book that you used as well i did i this was my choice and it, it's very old but I absolutely loved it. it. It was one that I could heartily recommend now. <laughs> this little pig went to market. Play rhymes for infants and young children compiled by Nora Montgomery and illustrated by Marjorie Gill. It is a very old one. Yeah. Um, like I said, we're just using our personal experience yes. that we're yeah. sharing with you in recommendations so we're not we've not got the most up-to-date things no but these are classic they don't you know you can add to them with the new ones that's wonderful but these ones are still yeah very very valid yes yes so really important for babies yeah. essentially to do this and I mean I still remember some of the nursery rhymes you that really do. imprinted we in had my brain. Copies. Do you remember the old ladybird books the first the second oh, third yeah. ones we had a set of those for the car because you you know we, we always had books in the bag in the car mm. when we went to the swimming pool. Yeah I started yeah. my love for audio books really young as yeah. I think about three or four yes. I was I was three or four years old when I listened to my first audiobooks and I loved them so it's always so important to read aloud to your children but also to have audiobooks on in the car or for them to go and listen to when they're playing by themselves yeah. it's really great to have that and so nursery rhyme song little word play poetry all of that kind of thing is so important but of course when you come to actually reading to your child our next tip is to really make reading part of your everyday routine you believe really strongly in that yes, don't you really really strongly I you know that was what we would do every morning was that was the first thing after breakfast was cleared away the day would start we would take to the sofa and you would bring a pile of books that we were to look at and read and that was the way it was and a I was joyful very little experience then, right? oh I mean, very very little well been, you walked you 10 this. months and i remember you being almost not as big as one of the books <laughs> <laughs> that bring. sounds like these yes. categories <laughs> yes. a pile of books <laughs> but yeah. um but no very very young very young indeed yeah. and you know we started with obviously one thing is they're captive audiences when they're babies and and young you know you can yeah. really choose some of your things so we had not just one nursery rhyme not just one poetry book for young children we had many that I'd collected with different styles and things which we'll talk about later but you know this was a huge favorite of yours <laughs> the yeah. Oxford nursery book by yeah. Ian Beck yeah, that, that was a real favourite. Many I remember times. that cover. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, and so we had a morning routine of reading together after breakfast, also a bedtime routine. Definitely, and usually also a sort of quiet half an hour around three o'clock because she was terrible from the age of, oh, I think of 13 months. They never tell you these things in the baby books. <laughs> She gave up napping. I didn't think kids could do that, but you did. You went to bed very early yeah. and you got up very early, but sleeping in the day, no. And so we had a, what we yeah. called a quiet time where, you know, we would look at books and we'd read, but they were essentially just quiet. Yes. And what you're also passionate about is not only establishing a daily reading ritual with your child, but you also really believe in reading books to them that show part of their everyday lives oh, and their absolutely. everyday routines. Absolutely. Well. Um, I mean, you soon pick up what your child loves and what all children are actually might be interested in. So if, if for instance, instance, you know, you do a lot of washing when you've got a lot of uh, a young child and <laughs> you absolutely loved playing with washing. And I remember, <laughs> you know, this is when hankies and tea towels come into their own because you can give them to the, your child so that they My can wash, wash. <laughs> yes, yes. 
which you absolutely loved. And we had things like Mrs. Tiggy Winkle, you know, the Beatrix oh, Potter. Yes. And then a book um, called Miss... Miss I think it was Mrs. Moppet's washing line or something <laughs> like that. And, you know, I would make, um, I would sort of copy out a picture of a T-shirt and, and draw stripes like with lines and then sort of photocopy it and cut it out for you. And every day you would colour it differently or have stars or dots, you know, and we'd read yeah. the book and we'd talk about it. So things like that are really important. You love dogs. Mm. Her first word was dog yeah <laughs> before <laughs> mum or dad yes, yes. <laughs> I really do like dogs I have to say <laughs> so you know there were a lot of dog books mm. in our life things like that you yeah. loved things like yeah. that yeah I think that's so true it's so important to follow your child's interests and yeah. also to try to go a bit deeper with a favourite book and think of activities yes. that you can do together around that book that also make you end up discussing the book further. Absolutely. But you Some, can keep things simple you with can. young children. It doesn't you have can. to be too complicated. Although you wanted a, um, a blue and white striped shirt and I remember it was from one of these books and you know fortunately that was the time of Le Petit Bateau because we were <laughs> living in France and I could get you striped and you were so thrilled. Sometimes you'd even put the, the top on before we read the book <laughs> together. And that's something you just <laughs> smile and nod and encourage, you know. Because <laughs> you were always interested in clothes and colour, so yes. bright and you love things like that. Yes. Yeah. Well, this really brings us on to our third tip, which is to follow your child's interests. Yeah. So if a child loves dogs or ponies or tractors yes. or washing or yes. <laughs> whatever yes. random yes. things yes. that seems to really get them excited definitely pay attention mm. to that yeah. and not only seek out books on that subject but also think of activities they can do to take them even further into yeah. those books. Do you remember we always had sort of a seasonal display of books as well? Yes, we did do and that. And I do think that has actually stuck in your mind. With yes, the things very that... obviously, I think. <laughs> yes, you do now quite naturally. But yes. you know, yeah, that... you really started me on seasonal reading yeah. at a very young age yeah. because I loved things like the Bramley Hedge books. Yes. I especially loved the illustrations in them. I could spend ages looking at them as a child and of course they're all very seasonal and very much of the English countryside which I just loved even then. Yeah. And you would always do a little seasonal sort of basket for yes, me I would. filled with books that particularly spoke to the season that we were in yeah and that's another way when we were talking of establishing reading rituals and thinking of books that are also linked to the ritual of your day it's also good to think of the rituals of the season that you're in yeah. and to think of books that celebrate the season and all of the days of celebration that come up in a month yeah. and things like that and to really share that with your child as well through books that's a wonderful way to get them noticing more I think yes yes definitely but our next tip uh, tip number four is also to remember that illustrations are just as important as words when it comes to children's picture books. Absolutely. I mean, I just said how I adored the Bramley Hedge books as a child, mm -hmm. and I really loved them for their illustrations even more than the stories. Mm -hmm. But all picture books are so important, not just the words, but really the illustrations. Yeah. And I think you, you believe need... in a variety. Oh, yes. I think you, this is something you really should think about because you don't want to just stick to your maybe your own taste you want to be able to give to your child all sorts of beautiful the artwork now especially is absolutely oh, it is. Wonderful. Like modern picture books are amazing they are and i love to mix the style so sometimes just black and white mm -hmm. sometimes beautiful colors with pastels we had books that i always felt were actually particularly appropriate for the mornings because they were quite exciting in their use of colour. Anything mm. by Raymond Briggs, 
basically his books um and brian wildsmith is another one their cuts are like explosions of color yeah. and i always felt that would get a child excited so they're good morning books you know perhaps not for going to bed but um, muted <laughs> yes. <laughs> something that you know sort of called a little bit differently and i loved that and we used a lot of real art in itself too like we looked at books that were actually art books mm -hmm. um with very simple yeah. um pictures or complicated ones and we talked mm -hmm. about them we play music we would really make them an experience mm -hmm. the yeah picture books. yeah i'm really interested in art and talking about art with children and when i was training to be a teacher i did a little specialist training course at the National Gallery as part of that and I really loved that training experience. I used it a lot in my teaching and I think it's so important to really talk to children about the illustrations in books, really get them noticing. I mean, like we said, the illustrations, especially nowadays, are amazing. They're often really detailed. They often tell a bit more of the story. Yes. There's an extended story going on in the illustrations of books yeah. that really add to the overall story of a book. And it's very important that you get your child noticing all of those details, talking about the illustrations. And I would really recommend looking on art gallery websites and museum websites because they often give a lot of free information and mm -hmm. tips on how to talk about art with children, how to get them noticing ideas and noticing little details in pictures. And that doesn't just mean you have to go to an art gallery and look at a painting Although that's to do that with a child. Well, Although that is a wonderful yeah. thing to do. But it means you can use all of those ideas yeah. in looking at a picture book yeah. as well. That's really true. And also as a mother, or a parent, whatever, um, what you can really enjoy. Sometimes there are books where there's little things in the illustrations that as an adult you pick up on, but the child may not. So it's an extra level of humour for you. Yes. You know, I think of Peace yeah. at Last, yeah. 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 Murphy, um, which, you know, the poor, yeah. the poor father with the many, many bags. <laughs> Many bags. <laughs> that's I'm true. Really that a child behind. would really get that, but no, that's no. a really <laughs> like funny nod to the parent yes. reading the book. Yeah. yeah, and I love picture books. The, the best picture books so often do that. They'll entertain an adult as well as a child. Yes, I mean, I think you have to think to yourself, great children's literature is just great literature, full stop. Mm -hmm. You know, it. you should be able to carry it with you all your life and this is whether it's mm -hmm. a picture book or later on a you know a, a story that these books really have staying power yes and it, they it's really, something you're they starting really them on a lifelong journey with their books yes yeah, so it's something to get excited about together yeah. but then our fifth tip is to really introduce a very wide range of books to mm. your children. So not just ball books, not just picture books, but also poetry books for children. Uh, that Those are things I absolutely love to use. Mm. Um, I would use them in teaching, but you reading poetry aloud to me as a child definitely made me love poetry. That was oh, always lovely. something we would do together. We, would, we studied a lot of poetry we when did. I was homeschooled. That was yeah. a big part of you teaching me English literature and language. Yeah. It's because it's a nugget. You know, mm. you, can, you can really study it and it's enough to... Even a young child can really look at something that's just four or five li lines and mm -hmm. concentrate on it. Yeah. And I think that's and really And again, it, it's all part of introducing a love for words extending yeah. a child's vocabulary and introducing the idea of words having a particular rhythm. Poetry is very important for that, just like song is. And I have a few poetry books mm. that I wanted to share. So mm -hmm. two are from my childhood that I remember really fondly. This is Read Me a Poem and illustrated by Inga Moore, chosen by Caroline Royds. I adored this poetry book when I was a I still remember my favourite poems from this. 
the tale of custard the dragon is yeah, in here. Yes. Yes. I absolutely adored that. But like, so many of them. Beautiful illustrations. But poems are little stories in their own right, especially for children. And again, you know, it's just brilliant when they're illustrated to sort of bring out um, a point from a poem. Poems are often whimsical. They don't always make sense. No. And that's the point of poetry yeah. too. Poetry really allows your child to have freedom and creativity and then how they view the world a lot more so often than picture books, which generally do follow a definite structure of a yeah. story and have an understandable story. A lot of poetry can be nonsense yes. or can be real whimsy, yes. but it's so important to show children that that's okay too. That's yeah. another way of yeah. being really creative. So that's why I get excited about poetry. And another one I loved when I was little was A Child's Garden of Verses by Robert Louis Stevenson. And this is a beautifully illustrated edition. And then I'll try to link these books in the description box. And then there are two new poetry books that I really recommend for parents, carer, carers, teachers, anyone involved with children. Or just for yourself. Or just for yourself. Yes, yeah. for the child, child in within. You. <laughs> yes. It's Everyone Sang, A Poem for Every feel Feeling, edited by William Seacott, and it's illustrated by Emily Sutton. This is gorgeous. It's also a lovely big book, which if you're a teacher, you understand how much you appreciate really big books that children even sitting at the back can see. Absolutely gorgeous illustrations by Emily Sutton. Just short poems that you can incorporate a poem a day as part of your reading ritual with your child. And then I am the seed that grew the tree, a nature poem for every day of the year. This is a beautiful book yeah. to enjoy with children as well. Again, it has gorgeous illustrations. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And see how big these illustrations yes. are. I mean, they're so important to children and they need to be talked about just as much as yes, the words absolutely. do. Um, but I really recommend this one as well. So, like we were saying, have a real having a real variety in books is so important. So, poetry as well as picture books, for instance. Non-fiction too, you had a lot yeah. of those. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, really important. And also, read aloud books that are of a higher level than yes, you know, your the, child that your child themselves. would read themselves. Yeah. And carry that on. I mean, I remember... Both you and my dad yeah. read to me when I was young. My dad would read, I remember he read things like The Hobbit to me and The Phantom Tollbooth yeah. and A Wrinkle in Time. And you read things like Little Women to yes. me. Yes. And I mean, so many. One of the Laura Ingalls Wilder. And I remember mm. that, you know, because the dog went missing and you, <laughs> you begged me. And this yeah. is the thing Very when you're concerned <laughs> about the dog always. <laughs> But the thing is, like, because that's, you know, when you're a mum, you listen to these things. You don't say, oh, no, the time's up. You've got away. I kept reading and I kept thinking, when is this dog going to reappear? Because I knew it would, but I couldn't remember when. And finally, about two hours later, I was really getting hoarse by the time. I think it came back and I was like, oh, joy and jubilation. I think yeah. we had to have something nice just to celebrate. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> it was a tense while there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yes, yeah, so... Read harder books to your children yes, with too. much bigger vocabulary and explain as you go along if the yeah. attitudes maybe are old fashioned. This is your opportunity to talk about exactly. that, about what we and think especially now. Especially in and some classic books yeah. or vintage books. Yeah. You need to address some of those things that come up in books yeah. like that. Talk about what's different now. Um, talk about how to um, approach subjects or... It's just very important, I think, to have those conversations. Definitely. You shouldn't shy away with them. And this is a natural way to do it. Yeah. You know, things come up and you can talk about it. You can talk about your own experiences as a child. You can make family stories part of what you're sharing through books too. Yeah. And I think that's so important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yes, plenty of, our, of variety was our fourth tip.
And well, actually, no, that was our fifth tip, wasn't I it? Think I think it was. we've done we? five. <laughs> yes. We've done our top, top but we five have tips, but we do have a bonus yeah. for you. And that is to make uh, not only reading with your child a part of your everyday routine and ritual, but to make a real ritual out of going and either mm. borrowing a book from a library or buying a book. Mm -hmm. I grew up in France yes. we lived in France and I was little so we and my mum didn't have a car no we had to walk everywhere yeah at least in the week and so we didn't go to the library but there was an English bookshop there was an English bookshop and because your dad loves books as well one of our things that we did most Saturdays was we went to it was called Elm in those days there was an English um, language bookshop in Geneva and we would probably each choose a book and that was our treat and you absolutely loved it oh yes it was mm. always such a highlight yes and that continued right up you know until i was a teenager really well, i remember many trips to once we were living in the states to yeah. borders and to barnes and noble yeah and i'd get to go and really have a look and choose one book yeah. and you let me really take my time yes i think that's so important you don't rush a child at the library or in a bookshop you you know you can be prepared to after all, that's their chance to look at things. And it's a way to, to teach children to, look, you're allowed to look at the books, but you handle them carefully because other children might want to buy them if you don't. Yes. <laughs> all these little tips that you yes. can do is, yes. is really important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just make it really fun for them. And it's a great way to go to a favourite independent bookshop and make that part of an exciting yeah. day for your child. Maybe you could have a little extra treat afterwards too, like go to a cafe, mm. have a hot chocolate or whatever look at the is a treat. And look at the books yes. that you've chosen and say why you're excited about them. Maybe read the one that yeah. the child has chosen whilst you're having your coffee um whatever but really make a little fun ritual yeah. out of it or you could always have a special treat back at home yes you could have... we often did that mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah and just make it part of something really fun and i would also recommend looking up your local library your local independent bookshop what author events they have yeah. for children's authors, what reading circle times they have, things like that. Yeah. These little events are really fun ways, again, for your children to engage a bit more deeply with the book, meet other children, meet some of their favourite authors. Yeah. It's just such a fun thing to do when you have a child. So become a part of your local community in that way and supporting your bookshop and your library. Yes, definitely. We did a lot of that. Um, once yeah. we got to the States in particular, that yes. was really something yeah. we we enjoyed a lot. Yes, I yes. remember that. Yes. <laughs> and I mean, we still have a lot of fun if we go to an independent bookshop together. <laughs> choose a book and then have some tea and cake afterwards yeah yeah that, that. <laughs> this is still a special ritual yes, for us yeah, it definitely is <laughs> but anyway i hope that you've enjoyed these tips that we've shared with you today like we said at the beginning these are just from our personal experience yes. we're not claiming to be experts but we still hope you find this useful we do and can i say for me i still buy picture books it is no <laughs> sort of um if there's something you love, and you do too, you, yes. you know, you, you yeah. we both, it, at Christmas we nearly always choose something special, yes. that's a new picture book or something that yeah. speaks to us, and I think, you know, you don't, there isn't a time limit no, on this. No, there isn't. Or an age and limit. it's wonderful if you are really enjoying this thing that you're sharing with your child, I think having that yeah. attitude too. So, it gives you really so much important. too. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a lovely way to think of it. But thank you so much for watching. Thank we'll you. both be back next Friday for the yeah. Comfort Book Club discussion of Emma. Which I haven't yet opened the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so guess what yeah, we'll be yeah. doing this weekend. <laughs> but we're really looking forward to I that discussion. I have read discussion. it many, many times. <laughs> yes, sorry. It's not like you don't oh, no. know it. No, but yeah, you are rereading it. Yes, though, I will. Discussion. Yes. But yes, and so please also send in your voice message if you want to contribute to the discussion 
by next Wednesday, which I think is the 25th of May. I'll link the instructions on how to do that in the description box, which is either below, it seems to sometimes be popping up on the side now, I don't know why. <laughs> YouTube just does these things to confuse all of us. But I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for watching. Extra big thanks to those who pressed the super thanks button yes. the last time. That's always so appreciated. But yes, have a wonderful weekend, everyone, and see you next week. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>